Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm here to do some videos, okay? This is my third time we doing these videos, okay? They really do not want me to get these messages out. Okay, before this month is over, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna finish I'm gonna do two more Black History Month videos. This is episode six, chickens. Okay, y'all know they always They always lose chickens and racism to the back, the African Americans to the black people. Okay, so I'm gonna tell y'all the truth about chickens. Okay, they do call African American chickens. Okay, they think we are chickens. Okay, <clears throat> um, I'm gonna tell y'all about the chicken ghost that is washing over my daughter's bar bodies. Okay, Jill and Kia, they were being washed over by the chicken ghost. I know him. He's nice, okay? He's not evil. Um, I will explain to y'all about him, okay, in a minute during the video, okay? Uh, so let's begin, okay? What does a chicken symbolize in Christianity? See? Um, as y'all notice, if you go to any funeral or wedding, anywhere, it's always, you know, you go to a funeral. At the reception, you know, at the whatever the hell they have at you know the funeral where you eat and stuff, they always serving fried chicken. At a wedding, they they serving some type of chicken. It, it don't matter if it's baked, fried, boiled, they serving it to you. Okay, or but basically, chicken is like kosher, y'all. I mean, if you eating chicken, it don't matter what color you is, you is representing the kosher of black people, African Americans. Okay. What does a chicken symbolize in Christianity? The chicken is an archetype of mother and child. The hen symbolizes ideal maternal, maternal love and Christian love. She is self-sacrificing, nurturing, protective, and comforting. Okay? The chicken figure as a symbol of parental and spiritual love in the literature of the race. In Matthew 23, 37, for example, Jesus invoked, invokes the symbol of a mother hen and her chicks to express the relationship he desires to have with the Hebrew people. When he said, O oh, Jerusalem, how often would I have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathers her chickens under her wings. Jesus loses the hen and her sheltering rings, not only as a metaphor for his desired relationship with Israel, but as a symbol of Christian love conceived in the image of a mother's love for her children. The hen symbolizes ideal maternal love and Christian love. She is self-sacrificing, nurturing, protective, and confident. The chicks who like human youngsters or precious do incline to be erect. Symbolize the Hebrew people as Jesus is portrayed as having ruled them with respect to his mission. Okay? We don't respect them, we respect my daughters and the other African Americans that have been called chicken. Okay? I'm going to explain to y'all how it, in the video. Okay? For goring orsidasi while maintaining a sense of the sacred and earthly life, Paige Smith and Sean Daniel evoke the hen and her chicks in an elegic and symbolic tribute to the chicken in the chicken book. When they write, as each chick emerges from its shell in its dark cave of feathers underneath its mother, it lies for a time like any newborn creature exhausted, naked, and extremely vulnerable. And as the mother may be taken as the abandoning of motherhood, so the newborn chick may be taken as an archetype representative of babies of all species, human and animal alike, just brought into the world. Uh, Smith and Daniel 321. This true boot is elated because the chicken book is about the rise and fall, the tragedy of the chicken. As it is noted in the book's original 1975 subtitles, historically, the chicken book appeared at the beginning of the last quarter 
of the 20th century, by which time the na natural life of the chicken, along with symbols and images of the chicken as a model of courage and domestic virtues, had been replaced by the so-called instable chicken, a lumping product divorced from the land and from everybody's family life, especially the bull's own and represented in corresponding demanding and interrising images. While it would be rash to suggest that before the 20th century, the life of chickens was rosy. Ahead lay a faith that premonition would have tried in vain to prevent from coming to pass, a faith embedded in attitudes and practices of the past. Okay. This is from one of my books. I am Alice Walker. Why did the balance chicken cross the road? Okay. It is one of those moments that will be engraved on my brain forever. Cool. For I really saw her. She was small and gray, flecked with black. So were her chicks. She had a healthy red comb and quick light brown eyes. She was that proud, chunky chicken shape that makes one feel always that chicken and hens especially have personality and will. Her steps were neat and quick and authoritative, and though she never touched her chicks, it was obvious she was sharp herding them alone. She clutched impatiently when our feet falling even newer, one of them, especially self-adored and perhaps hard-headed, ceased to respond, okay, from one of my books. In addition to this, to the much longer number in, of innocent chickens, who African Americans, who was killed in the horrible deaths they endured in the slaughterhouse that day and every day, was the misery of their lives leading up to their horrible deaths. My daughters, Kia and Jill, including the terror attack, they endured several hours or days before they were killed mystically referred to as chicken kissing. I compared all this to the relatively satisfying lives of the majority of human victims of 9-11 attack prior to the attack and add that we have a plethora of patterns ranging from proclaiming ourselves heroes and avengers to the constellation of family and friends to the relief of pain killing drugs and alcoholic beverages and more, including our ability to make some sort of conspecific sense of the tragedy. Where the chickens have no insulation, no compensation, no comprehension, and no relief. Balaji's marine stamp doctrine have pointed out that other species, including chickens, may very well suffer in states that no human had ever dreamed of or experienced. Got that for both of my daughters. And Dawkins, 1985-29. The fact that intensely raised chickens are forced to live in systems that do not reflect their psyches, they like their psyches, but rather, are, but rather ours, makes it inevitable that they are suffering in ways that elude us. Okay, my daughters. Okay, um, as cinnamon creatures, we have enough in common with chickens to make reasonable judgments about their suffering, and we have ample scientific evidence to support empathy for them. The idea that human beings cannot largely recognize suffering in a chicken or draw a meaningful conclusion about how a human being will react to the condition under which a caged hen lives or about how the hen feels behind bars. It's like that how the people that did them did that to my daughters, I feel like they don't care. They were they saying like they seen they seen pain, suffering, they didn't care, they kept doing it y'all. Um, it's unfounded because there is a basic for empathy and understanding in the fact of human evolution continuity with other creatures that enables us to recognize and infer in those creatures experiences similar to our own. We are told that we humans are capable of knowing just about anything that we want to know 
it's so I want to be what it feels like to be one of our victims. We are told we are being emotional if we care about a chicken and grieve over a chicken's plight. However, it is not emotion that is really under attack, but the vigorous feminine emotions of pity, sympathy, compassion, sorrow, and indignity on behalf of the victim. A fellow creature emotion that undermines business as usual. See? It's not personal, it's business to them. By contrast, such manly emotions or patronized pride, conquest, and mastery are encouraged. The little fruit. They were selling and eating poor dead mommy and baby animals. Okay. Also, they cut black people feet into chicken feet from back in the day. So if y'all go look on Google of how a chicken or a rooster or a hen feet is, you know, they only got like three toes or whatever. They do that to African American feet. They turn them into chicken feet. Okay, chicken legs. Okay. Um, in ancient Roman times, a roost of prophetic chickens were happily consulted by enemy statesmen on matters of the utmost importance. These sacred chickens were revered for the power they conferred on those who heeded the predictions about the future. They were gleaned from their eating behavior. Cool, y'all. Remember, I made that video about my secret a recipe, you know, my tuna fish or whatever. That with all my food, though. So, with my chickens, it do the same thing. So, any chicken I cook, it don't matter if it's baked, boiled, fried. It always gives me predictions to hear other people that eat my food predictions to their food show as well. Like me. That's how I found out about the chosen ones. So with the full meaning of chosen ones, my chicken told me that the other night. I cook, I cook chicken. I cook fried chicken like... Three days ago. I cooked it like three days ago. And then when I that's how I got that info. Okay. Okay. So yeah, y'all take heed to y'all food, okay? Um, if you want to know more about my little secret recipes about my food, just hit me up. Now, also, y'all, they also lose chickens in blood sacrifices and blood rituals. So, um, blood rituals often involve a symbolic death and rebirth. As literal bodily birth involves, involves bleeding. Blood is typically seen as very powerful and sometimes as unclean. Blood sacrifices is sometimes considered by the practitioners of prayer, ritual magic, and spell casting to intensify the power of such activity. Okay, now you can lose chicken blood to you can lose chicken blood to do a spell, or you can also lose chicken blood to break a spell. So I feel like that's what Kia mother is about mother is about is to break the spell. What spell I don't know. Um I'm hearing just for that moment. So, yeah, just watch um, Honey House 2. Remember when the Mexican bought the chicken, that chicken in there for that blood sacrifice to get the demons out the house? Yes, yeah, like that, okay. But it can also grant a wish, too, or, or grant a spell, okay, like my first daughter. The Chinese tradition of drinking chicken blood symbolized brotherhood, and it reflected in the term of pumping chicken blood which mean insanity or excitement, both for them, okay? Um, followers of an Orisha, they told me no. The Orishas told me no. Followers of an Orisha would offer them food and sacrifice animals to them in order to build and maintain a personal relationship with the spirit. The process not only brings the worshiper closest to their Orishas, but makes them more aware of the presence of the Orishas within, within them. A car bond with an animal sacrifice such as a bull, sheep, goat, or a dove that unwent Jewish ritual slaughters. Slatter sacrifices could also consist of grain, meal, wine, or incense. The Hebrew Bible say that Yahweh commanded the Israelites to offer offerings and sacrifices on various altars. I heard no. Also, if you see your chicken is bleeding when you're cooking it, that's normal, okay? But before that, they never bleed, okay? Now why you cooking it? 
Okay. So that's supposed to be sending. That's supposed to be sending for find my daughters or something. Um, that's what they told my she keeps told me. Okay. So when you see it bleeding. They mean they mean the shikings are still hurt about this, okay? Or my kids are still hurt. A lot of people are still hurt about this, okay? Especially the shikings. Even the shikin goes. What happens if you okay? Um Okay, now Watch my movie Bones. I did say that in one of my videos. In, in watch my movie Bones. I did say that. I said, um, you know, I was a Latino dude too. I said, uh, everybody knows that the that chicken farms is ran is owned by the Ku Klux Klan or whatever. Yeah, us. We is owned by them still, okay. But um, also watch me Michael other movie called Undercover Brother. When the mayor got tranquilized, okay, remember the white men, he wanted the mayor power, so he they started poisoning all the chickens. That's why me and my crew were going undercover to free the mayor from the, the spell or whatever, the tranquilizers. Okay, yeah, watch that movie. So this is about the chicken ghost. This is where my two daughters is at. <clears throat> watch my video. I watched my song. I seen a man die at the end. The man with the top hat came to get the dude or whatever. The the chicken the chicken ghost came to get my daughters. Or he the re he he really is the one who washes over the his chickens. He the one who gives us his chickens so we can eat them. Okay, he is called the chicken god. This is how a small stone with a natural hole in it is called in Russia. People believe that it's protected poultry and livestock is livestock from curses and evil spirits. Yeah, why we are supposed to be eating chicken. So it can break whatever the hell that is on us. Okay? Oh, so they cannot touch us, something like that. Anyways, people believe that it is protected poetry and livestock from curses and evil spirits. Simulated their fertility and kept them within their yard. Such a stone had to be untraditionally found in a field or on the road. Besides, as a chicken guide, slaves could also lose a clay partial with a hole a make from a broken jug, a pot put on a fence, a leaky bath shoe, a bed paw or, or an oven stone. In other words, old broken into clay items. The goal was to place chicken guide on a highly visible place so that he immediately caught the eye. Therefore, gaze of the visitors fell on it first and did not linger on the chickens. The slaves believed that the chicken guy protected chickens from Kimora, Kikimora, which is Gina. Or Shanice, I feel like Gina. It could be for both of them. Who plucked their feathers and pet at their heads as well as from the Marivo, who could hurt the unloved cattle. In the form of a pot inverted upside down on a fence, the chicken guy simply sheltered the chickens from danger. To ensure that Damaval would not torment the cattle, slaves hung the, hung the chicken guide in the barn with the words, Here, grandfather, a guide for you. Pray to him and don't hurt our cattle. Here's, yeah, okay. Here's an excerpt from the upcoming new book. And when the snow cover comes, it's time to welcome Marina. Meet her with food and drink and ask her to bring more snow so that the winter crops will not freeze. It is also time to free the frost with porridge, asking him not to be too fierce. But if you want to bite them for a good cause by pinching people's noses, he reminded them that they are alive. And although the solar year is rolling to the end while the human race is alive, the sun will not die in the pitch night. Dog but grandchildren, slaves are ready to fight with anyone, if only by passing the longest night. A new son was born, a new collar year began. The, the year ends with Quatron Day and begins with Coli. Molish, the great spinner. Here's in the cell from the upcoming new book. This time of the year, slaves honor Mokash, the great spinner. When the flocks is all gathered, soaked, romped up, calmed out, and ready for spinning, my daughters, or the machines, 
and then the young girls would sit down at the spinning wheel to be supervised by their grandmother, Papoka. The time had come for spinning songs and divination on the thread. What year is coming? Or are there many knots, difficulties on the thread? Young people will be planning their hand, ready, trying to straighten the thread to spin their good faith. Okay? This is what the chicken guy look like. Okay? Show y'all right quick. He looked like that. I'm going to still put him in the description, okay? Um, so, yes, I'm out. We're going to talk to him. Y'all can. I'm out. Peace.